Hi, I'm Stephen Hamm from Archery Supplies and today we're here to tune the PSE Perform X. So I've been shooting this bow for about a week um, and I haven't tuned this bow at all. In fact, I know it's not tuned because I've basically shot a bear shaft through it and I know it doesn't hit the middle. But what I'm going to say first off is people overthink tuning to such a degree that it blows me away. Um, I The red bow, um, the red perform I shot before this, the 3D, I did not tune and I shot like a one of the well, one of the better scores in Australia. Um, don't overthink it. Keep things simple. And when I say keep things keep keep things simple, the arrow's got to be on the string at 90 degrees and through the middle of the riser. That's it. Um, what tuning does? It makes minor improvements to the overall flight of the arrow. That's it. So if you aim in the nine, the arrow's still going in the nine, whether it's tuned or untuned the bow, because an untuned bow is still going to shoot the same arrow downstream every time. So on that point, I've got guys who shoot perfect scores indoors with untuned bows. Straight off the pack, they don't, they don't do any tuning at all and shoot perfect scores. Um, and I'm a bit that way, so yeah, um, if that's boring if that's not what you want to hear. Now I've already shot four arrows because I thought the video was playing. Now I'm going to shoot the bear shaft. Let's go down and we'll see where that bear shaft lands. Okay, so we're up here at the target. Now all my arrows, all my arrows are in the middle. So they're all tens. There is three X's and one low 10. Now that's how I shoot. And when I say that's how I shoot, that's better than what I shoot. So basically, you know, I'm still getting used to the bow. I'm not making excuses here. The bow's physically heavier and I do wobble around a bit. So this, all tens, it for me is is really good i'm happy with that now you'll notice the bear shaft is way off to the off to the right <laughs> so that means i've got to move my rs left or right now even if you google it and it says which way to move the rs sometimes you've got to move it the other way right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to move it one direction and we're going to test it and then i'm going to move in the other direction and hopefully this arrow here will move now sometimes if you look up um, tuning your compound bow, this will indicate weak or stiff arrow spine, um, and I believe it indicates a weak arrow spine and the thing. Now for me with a compound that's not really the case, because with a compound the arrow comes out almost dead straight. It is the case with a recurve, but not a compound, because a compound is not getting the, um, the fishtailing effects. So this is more about getting the arrow to shoot dead straight down the middle. So even if your bow is not tuned, which obviously my bow is not, you can still shoot them all in the middle. So that's my first point. The low 10, my sight clearly would have been on the 10 or I would have dropped the shot a little bit in the middle. Now, I have been shooting this bow at home. Um, I'm only shooting about 30 arrows a night because I'm getting used to the weight and it's hurting my muscles a bit in my back. So, and I've moved from 50 pounds up to 56 pounds. 60 pounds was too much for me. So that's the first thing, poundage and the bow weight. You've got to get used to it. So build up slowly. So we're going to do that now. We're going to move the arrow rest slightly across and then see the impact on the bear shaft test. Okay, so I've sold, so I'm about to move the arrow rest. Now I've sold about, in the first week I've sold about seven, eight perform bows. Um, four were to local archers in my state. Um, now they've all shot personal bests with the bows since they got them, okay? Now, they've basically all reported the same things that I've found with the bows a little bit heavier and it's taken them a while to get used to the weight of the bow. But they are shooting better and some of them actually reduce the weight the weights on their stabilizers um but they've all put the weight back on now so but they've all shot personal bests now as far as tuning is concerned one of them's a really good shot and he came down here and he spent a few hours with me tuning his bow 
and he was getting ripped through paper like Pshh. and I was like oh, I couldn't work it out right I didn't do any of the limb like this limb alignment stuff here to move your limbs left or right don't ever touch it there's no like why would you um, please don't touch it and if you touch that I know you've got no idea what you're doing and that might sound really contradicting but it's like I d that is so far away from where you should be doing it's it makes no sense to me to start off with anyway who's getting left to right tears now his first thing would be to to do that limb alignment stuff or do the cam alignment let's make sure the cams are aligned so what I did is I actually shot his bow and I pinholed it now you're gonna say well tune should be to the archer what was actually happening was he was talking the riser a little bit because he wasn't used to the PSE grip because he was shooting elite previously. Now he is shooting his best scores with the PSE. Um, and I think now that bow would probably paper tune for him because he's used to it. But back when he first got it, for him, it's a matter of getting used to the grip. So now I have sold some of these bows interstate i've sold two to one person which i don't know how he's going with it um i've sold one to jimmy ellis he's got a youtube channel and he's reported his best scores in the first week with it um he's done videos on tuning so overall my response from the pc perform has been very positive and i've got friends in the us who watch the videos and i see their posts on facebook and they're reporting that they've shot their best scores with this bow and I've seen their scores posted on YouTube I'm sorry on Facebook and they've been really really good so I'm like like it's fine now the other key I'm using these are the Eastern sorry these are the Eastern with the small little heads so I can get in between the gap to make the adjustment now the rest I'm shooting is a spot hog premier rest with a blade fitted um, I've always shot this rest. I like it because it's got micro adjustment and I like the spring tension. So I have shot fixed blade rests. Um, but then I got to a tournament and someone had bent my blade on me. Um, so I'm just adjusting that. And what I like about this rest, it's got micro adjustment. So it's really easy. Now the bear shaft was on the right. So we're just going to move this across a little bit. I'm just going to move it across one little mark. So it's got little marks here on the rest. I'm going to try and I just moved it across one mark. And now I'm going to lock that back in place and we're going to see what impact that makes. Now ideally when we're tuning, we would have um, multiple unfletched arrows and multiple fletch. But for this purpose I'm just doing the one. So because I'm pretty sure it'll work straight away. So. I'm at 80 meters and ideally I'd still up, up closer. Now this will change my point, impact point on the target. So let's just shoot a couple of arrows. Now the bear shaft. I'm just shooting a couple because I'm pretty comfortable. Now when you are bear shaft tuning, you've got to make sure it's a good shot. That last one wasn't a good shot, I aimed it a little bit long, so let's go and see where the arrow landed. First thing you'll notice is the arrows are further across to the left, because that's where I've moved the rest. But the gap distance is definitely closer. You can see the bear shaft 
is actually almost in the same line. So I'm actually going to push that rest a little bit further across that way and see if I can get them pretty much to, to touch. Now in this one, the bear shuffle was actually lower where it was actually higher last time. So I'm not really that worried about that. Um, I'm more worried about getting these across. So I'm going to move the sight and move that rest another like millimeter, like a couple of paper thicknesses across to that way. Now you'll see my grouping, even though my, even though my tuning's better, my grouping is no better okay so anyway let's go and i'll make that minor adjustment and we'll do it again so i've moved the arrow rest across across a smidge further and we're going to see how this shoots Now I did sell one of these, so I did sell one of these bows to a customer who returned it. He um, he said nothing straight. I'm, I'm going to get the wording wrong, but I'm going to try and get the gist of the thing is that nothing was straight on the bow. Everything was crooked, and the bow's no good, which is cool. I just said send the bow back. Now I first want to go to some of the stuff that he pointed out. Um, now he said. He said his limbs here don't look straight. Now that's really common on PSCs. I don't know why, but they they don't. They don't look straight. I don't know why, but the bow shoots fine. Um, he said I moved my limbs as far across as I could using the lateral limb system until the bolts came off. Yeah. Never ever touch the lateral limb system. Like in this tuning session, I can guarantee you I'm not going to touch it no matter what. Um, now, as far as cam cam alignment, now the first performs I got in had one washer, one washer on this side, and then three washers on that side. Now I actually moved them to have two washers on this side, and I think it was two on this side to fix up the cam limb. I found a little bit of cam limb. Now one washer is one washer is the thickness of you know two pieces two pieces of paper. So they're very, very thin. Now that did remove um, some tear from the paper to make a bullet hole through paper. Now the next batch of performs that came in had two washers on the left hand side and it was exactly how I set them up. So it hasn't been an issue since. So But again, it still gets back to shooting the shots. You do a good shot, it goes in the middle. And I'm always critical of myself more than the gear. Um, it's always about working on my own technique and my own shooting. And okay, the bear shaft. Anyway, the bow came back, and as far as I was concerned, the bow was fine, and I'm more than happy to shoot that bow. But if you're, and you only had the bow literally a day, um, so yeah, like never change the limb alignment. The cams, you know, as far as shimming the cams left to right to remove the tears or torque always be really cautious of that because it could be you inducing the torque so you want to get on get want to get on a draw board and check to make sure the cams are not leaning but it will only be a minor bit if they are leaning
so when I shot my 3D um, perform, I didn't touch the bow at all. I just went and shot it. Um, and I shot really well with it. I didn't tune it. I just went and shot arrows and they shot really, really well. So let's go and see where those arrows went. Okay, so I've moved my sight. That's my first thing. I've moved my sight back in the center. Now you'll see the bare shaft arrow is still out to that side. Um, but the gap's starting to reduce. Originally my arrows were in the X's, which they are back in the X's now. They're three tens, two X's and one ten. Um, and my bare shaft is now a nine to that side. Now originally the bare shaft was out here. So I'm just going to move it another fraction. So the gap originally was, originally it was almost four fingers and then I made an adjustment which was one mark on the Premier Rest which is like three bits of paper and it moved to about two and a half fingers difference between the fletched and unfletched and now I'm at basically two fingers so I'm just going to move across a little bit more and try and get this arrow shooting in the middle. Now it could be the arrow, which is why I always like to have two unfletched arrows to make sure it is, it is the, it is the bow or is me doing this. Um, Cause yeah, like the arrows are shooting fine. They're shooting X's. So let's go and do it again and see how it goes. Okay, so I've moved my arrow rest another position across to the right. Um, to try and close that gap up. Now when I do that, I always look down the center of the string and the center of the riser. Now what I've noticed um, from where I first set it, so originally I didn't look at the stabilizer. The stabilizer was on that side of the arrow. Um, but I thought that when I set it up that the arrow was straight down the center of the riser, like the center of here, the center of the grip, and the center here, and this little bolt hole here that being the center. But the stabilizer's on this side. As I move the arrow rest in, the arrow is becoming more in line with the arrow. Uh, sorry, the stabilizer's in more in line with the arrow. The, stabil the stabilizer's still on that side of the arrow, and I think it's kind of close to where it was. Um, so we're just going to shoot some more arrows and kind of see where they go. So basically I'm always checking if things are out of whack then you've got to question it. On my expression for example when I shot that my arrow rest was on the left hand side of what I considered the center of the riser um, and on the left hand side of the stabilizer. But it shot really well and I shot great scores with that bow. Now I always set up my knocking point slightly above 90 degrees also, um, just a fraction, just one of little marks. I didn't move my sight this time, so you see this, the arrow's on the right hand side of the target. Now generally, generally this is pretty easy to do as far as tuning. You just basically keep moving your arrow until it's everything's in the center. I had difficulty with fat arrows tuning because the spine on fat arrows is not correct for the bow. But with the Victory VAP, sorry, with the Victory NVX, they have spined arrows. So 400, 500, 600 spined arrows. So I just shot basically the same spine as I shoot here and they all shot perfect straight up. So.
Let's go ahead and see where that went. Target. You can see my arrows across to the side, which indicates I moved the arrow rest across to that side. And now the distance between the fletched and unfletched is less than two fingers. But there's still the difference between fletched and unfletched. The unfletched still being to that side. But now it's about one and a half fingers. So I've got to make that change again and then repeat this. So let's do it again. Okay, so it's possible I've moved my arrow, arrow rest across twice because I got through shooting this I got sidetracked, the shipment came in, so it is possible I have adjusted my arrow rest twice. So we'll just see where these arrows go. I have moved my side across. So let's just sort of see where it goes. It's probably as yeah, fair to say I moved across. Now when I look behind my bow at the setup um, and I follow the track down the rest and through the center, I'm now finding my arrow on that side of the stabilizer. So now the arrow is on the, the arrow started on the left hand side of the stabilizer, it's now on the right hand side of the stabilizer. And the rest looks like it's on the right hand side of the center of the line of the whole bow so it's gonna be interesting to see where these arrows land I remember one of the bows I shot straight out of the packet I shot a bullet hole and I was like yay because I hate tuning the bows I just like shooting I like concentrating on my own on my own technique. So now we'll go down and see where those arrows landed. I get now the unfletched arrow is pretty much in the same line as the fletched arrows. Now my arrow rest is on the right hand side of the center of the line of the bow. And when that customer who returned the bow said things don't look lined up, things don't look li lined up. But the results are pretty much there. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to shoot another, I'm going to move my sights across and I'm going to shoot some more shots to kind of see how it's all feeling for me as far as this alignment because obviously the, they were there and now the arrows are crossed to the side here and it's been done in a couple of increments so we're going to now do another shoot and see sort of how they're sitting okay so this is what my bow is looking like at the moment and you can see the line of the arrow is slightly on the right hand side of the arrow now we're just going to pan up and pan down. So the string, I'm trying to, I'm going to try and put the string where I think the middle of the bow is there, and then I'm going to pan down. So I think that's pretty close to the middle, and you can see the arrow is kicked in, and. So I started off with that with the arrow being on the left of the stabilizer. So that's where I started off. Um, and now you can see this now if I line up the string with the stabilizer, that's there. You can see the actual the arrow is actually to the right of the stabilizer. Now I'm not liking that setup at all. Um, now I'll try and jump behind. Now you can actually see behind this time, I'm straight behind. The alignment is actually kind of looks okay now. So part of it, out of it when you know people look behind, I'm like, is this all square? Is it not square? I'm like, should I be changing my position of my limbs? Um 
Like to me, the arrow definitely looks inside the line of where I want it. Um, so now we're just going to shoot some more shots and sort of see how they go. Because I definitely prefer my arrow to be left where it is now. Because to me, it's looking. It's all looking to be on the. It's looking to be on the right of the stabilizer. And it's looking to be on the right of where I think the center is. Um, so, now getting back to the limb alignment, which I said never to touch, could I do my little limb alignment to try and line this all up? It is something I could play with. Am I going to play with it? I don't want to play with it. Um, and I'm really hesitant too. So we're just going to shoot some arrows now and sort of see where they group and see how it's all looking. Now normally through through bear shaft tune I just get it smack on straight away so now the other thing it could be is it could be getting contact with the cables causing a kick which could be causing So I suppose, I suppose what I'm saying is my fletchers could be touching the cables on the way through, causing the kick. So that's one thing that's, that's got me a little bit concerned. Because um, I know on one of the bows I set up, I did have to move the cable guard down to create more fletch clearance. So I'm like, oh man. So it could be I'm actually getting false readings through this tuning. Because like I said, I like everything down the centre and when it's not down the centre, I'm now raising questions. And I'm shaking around peeps. So now I'm going to shoot the bear shaft. Now that bear shaft hit something in the target. It sounded like the other arrows. So let's go and have a look how this end is. Okay, so the group, whether I shot bad or not, because literally the group is, the group, group's really tight. But you can see the group's moved from there and it's actually shooting lower now. Still too far that way, but I'm not feeling comfortable with it at this stage and it's not how it should be and it's not how this video should be turning out. Which is probably, when I started this video, I said, you know, I had the customer return the bow to me who wasn't that happy with it. This is probably what he went through. And for me, I'm like, oh, look, I don't want to, when I say I don't want to explain it to you, it's, when a customer's not happy, you just better go, look, I'll cut my losses, right? Now, once again, my grouping is fine. So if I'm happy with that arrow being inside that stabilizer line, I leave it and just shoot groups and worry about myself. But I'm not happy with that being where it is. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the arrow rest back to where I think it should be. And I'm going to move that cable guard rod. Because I reckon it's the cable guard rod causing the, causing the kick. Now, I have moved my cable guard, which you didn't see off the video. I did it one night at home and I moved it about like that much, like a 
tiny, tiny little bit after the customer came in and I moved his. And I moved his right around from one o'clock position to a three o'clock position. I moved mine from one to just a little bit around, not even two o'clock on a, on a clock. So that being one o'clock, which is how it comes from PSE, I moved mine there. I moved his to that position, straight out 90 degrees. And I mean, it was perfect. It bullet holed, everything tuned perfectly. So I think, even though I've got this tuned well now, I think it's giving me a false reading. And this is part of the problem with tuning. Um, I think it's hitting the cables because it's a flexi guard and I think it's pulling in. So with that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust the cable guard. I'm gonna move the RRS back in to where I think it should be and I'm gonna retune it. But this group is like, it's that big. It's that big. So the grouping's tight, but I'm not happy with it. So let's go and adjust the cable guard. Let's make the changes and let's see what it is. Now to change the cable guard on the PSA, you will need a Torx, Torx screw set of Allen keys. Now the standard PSE set of Allen keys, I'm pretty sure doesn't do it. Um, it takes a really small one because you also need to change the angle on the carbon rod because the carbon rod's a flexi rod. So I'll do that now and I'll let you know what it needs. Thank you. I had the bow tuned. Now what I've done is I've moved the cable guard. So I've moved the cable guard from the position it was at, which was up there, to 90 degrees, so maximum clearance. I've then rotated the cable guard here, this little flex bar, bar so it's had 90 degrees. So basically if it was a clearance problem, that will show straight up. I've now moved the RRS back to center um, to make it all aligned. Now if that customer who returned it went, oh look, it didn't look right, that's what it'll be. And see, he would have been playing with the limbs to get everything aligned to go to make it look right. He wouldn't got it. And then it's like, oh, this is no good, right? That's why I didn't change the limb alignment because I don't think that's the issue. Like it was shot okay, and maybe this bow just everything's to the to the right. But on the ones I've set up previously, that hasn't been the case. Everything's been straight down the center, and it's all been fine. So that's what I'm doing with this bow. So let's shoot the arrows. I don't know where the sights are going to go because I haven't adjusted my sight. All I've done is I've moved the arrows back to center. Um, I've moved the cable guard out. Now in the past, when I moved the cable guard, um, I found it. I found the arrow shot to the left. Um, so moving the cable guard, creating more clearance, move the arrows on the target to the left. So this could be very, very far to the left. But once again, I'm only interested to see how the bear shaft and the fletch arrow actually group. So let's try this out. This is the fletched arrow. I was watching the Lancaster Open and some guys were shooting hooded peeps and some weren't and I'm like because I'm really thinking to myself I'll get a non non hooded peep uh, it's really off putting for me when my arrows don't go in the center when I'm grouping across to the right or the left because I feel like it's a bad shot, it's a bad shot. That's why I like to group arrows, and which is why I shoot many arrows at the one target. Um, because I like that whole feeling that I'm grouping arrows. And when I'm shooting off to the red, I'm like, oh, that must be a bad shot. It's just, it's a purely, purely a mental thing. I like to be hitting the middle, and I like to be Robin Hooding my arrows. Like I said, so far I've Robin Hooded like broken pins, 
done more knocks, but pins, I've broken three pins. And that's been the last three days, so now we'll do the unfletched arrow. So this is straight down the center, just move the cable guard out. So basically, it was how I started, but then I was trying to tune because of my theory was I was actually hitting the cable guard. So let's see if my theory is correct. Or it, if my theory is wrong, this arrow is going to be way out to the right again. So this is, uh, this is the shot. Deal with that went, so I have to go down there and see. Okay, so my group is opened up, but you can see now it's two fingers apart. So my theory was the cable guard absolutely not correct. So with that, I'm going to move my RS back where it was. I'm going to shoot some more arrows. Um, so I'm going to basically set it back where it was, where the bear shaft hits the middle of the arrows. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot some groups. And I'm going to score. And I'm going to see how my score is. Um, I'm also going to talk um, to PSC. Um, because I'm not the first person to shoot a perform. In fact, the ones I've sold have all been fine, straight down the centre. And most of them have been to the left. And mine's to the right. So I'm like, eh, I don't know. I haven't checked cam lean yet. From behind it looked okay. Um, so I'm a little bit puzzled. Um, but I'm not moving the limbs. So whether that being stubborn or not. So, so yeah, I'm going to put the ARS back. I'm actually going to shoot forward or back to make sure it still shoots in the middle. Um, I'm going to think about it. I'm going to ask PSE about it because there's been pros who have been shooting this bow for a while and I'm going to see what they have done because for me, I'm not... I mean, like I said, I've set, I've set up a few of these bows. Um... The other thing it could be it could be spine. So I do have other arrows of lighter spine. I do have 400 spined arrows. So I might play around with spine as well. But my battery is running out because that's how long it takes to tune this bow. Um, so I'm a bit mixed now whether I try spine of arrow or what I try. So that's where I'm going to leave this video. And I'm going to get back to you. I'm going to try some different things first. But I'm not playing around with limbs. I'm going to try spine um, and I'm going to ask PSE as well because and I could try increasing and decreasing the bow poundage. So maybe I'll do that. So maybe I'll wind up and wind down the bow poundage and check where this arrow flies to in the thing. Maybe that would be an interesting video. So I'll take the poundage where I've got my bow now because I'm pretty comfortable where it's I'm pretty comfortable where I see the arrow rest. It's just I don't like this arrow being out to the right. Um, so maybe I'll do another video on tuning. And I'll go recharge the cameras. And I'm sorry that it takes so long, but tuning can be a pain in the bum. And I will go up and down in poundage and see if that has any impact on this at all um, before I ask PSE. So that's where I'm up to. Um, and yeah, so I'm Stephen Ham from Archery Supplies. That's my whole tuning thing. Normally it's pinhole, bang, done, finished. Sometimes it's not, and that's where I'm at. So, so maybe it wasn't the cable guard, and maybe I should move the cable guard back. So anyway, I don't know. So next one I'm going to do is I'm going to do the poundage. I'm going to move poundage up or down, and see what impact that has. So I'm going to take it home. 
I'm going to take my bow home and I'm going to charge this camera up. I'm going to do another one. I'm sorry it takes so long, but that's just part of the process. So, yeah. So, I'm Stephen Ham from Archery Supplies and stay tuned for part two. Terribly boring video. Anyway, thank you. Bye.